Hello, you're listening to eBible Fellowship's new open form excerpts, and now we present the following excerpt. Welcome to our open forum program. Please go ahead with your call. Hey, Chris. <clears throat> Peter uh, and Lazarus in John, John 21. Can Peter be uh, looked at as a picture of all the believers, of course, feeding sheep uh, in these times that we are in our judgment day? And when um, he was inquiring about Lazarus and Lazarus picturing the great multitude that are being drawn. Could he be a picture of the great multitude that being, are being drawn? And that um, Christ pretty much tells Peter, in a mm -hmm. nutshell, don't worry about him. You know, just feed my sheep in a sense. that Because, you know, you have a lot of people who are like, where's the multitude? Where are they? And that we are just to be focused on feeding God's sheep. And, and God's going to pretty much deal with that. We're bringing all his flocks in. Can that be a picture of that? Well, it's very interesting that it's in, you know, that context right after John 21, I think 15 through 17 is the threefold feed my sheep stanza. And then we read in um, in verse, verse 18, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, this is Christ still speaking to Peter, uh, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. And the reference to young, we can relate to the day of salvation, being old, day of judgment, and also the Lord is getting into his death, that wherein he will glorify God. Verse 19, this spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. So Peter is a type of the elect who, in his old age, he's going to go where he would not, that is, it would not be according to his desire. And we can, we can see that during the day of salvation, it was according to the people of God's desire to bring the gospel of salvation. In the day of judgment, no, we're we're not thrilled. We're not thrilled that salvation has come to a close and and we can't go running with with water, uh, you know, like Lazarus and in Luke 16, where Father Abraham says to the rich man in hell that they which would come from hence to you cannot. They which would expresses a desire that uh, he wanted Lazarus to come with a drop of water. Well, they which would bring not only a drop, we bring the whole bucket, cannot. And so it's a grievous time period. Old age is typically more difficult, harder than when you're young. When you're young, you have energy, you have strength, you know, you don't, you don't have all the physical ailments. And when you're you're older, physical ailments, losing energy, losing strength, and so forth. And so for the people of God, there's a weariness. There's this tendency towards fainting. Faint not at my tribulations for you in the day of judgment. And so also Christ is telling Peter of the death in which he will glorify God. Glorify ye Jehovah in the fires in the isles of the earth, from Isaiah 24. That is the fire that is lit among the nations or in the world. We are to glorify God in the day of judgment, and we'll glorify him by taking up our cross. And, and it's always been the case to take up the cross has to do with learning the truth of the Bible in proper time and season and following that truth following it and doing it, uh, not just hearing it, but receiving it, hearkening and obeying and doing it. And always that's taking up the cross. And, and so it's really implied here, another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me, follow me. And in other places, take up your cross and follow me. And here in uh, verse 20, then Peter turning about 
See if the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth us? Peter, seeing him, saith Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? What shall this man do? Now, the I had some notes here I'm trying to review quickly. Well, yeah, I. it's been a while since I looked at it. But the disciple whom Jesus loved, in all probability, is Lazarus. Lazarus, who was dead for four days, and Christ raised them from the dead, which explains Peter's curiosity. He looked upon the disciple whom Jesus loved and said to the Lord, What shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. And so again, to Peter, who would represent the elect, each one of us, focus on obeying Christ and following the word of God, which will, you know, be, be your death. The world's been turned into hell or the graveyard, and, and here we are in the world. So, in a sense, this is our death that we are experiencing as we follow the Bible through these days of Judgment Day. And so Lazarus was raised up after four days, and he also can be a picture of the elect who were dead and now alive. The great multitude in Revelation 20, God describes the great multitude. Well, verse 4, we read of the souls of them beheaded for the witness of Jesus. That's the first fruits, picturing those saved in, in the church. But then in verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the great multitude is called the rest of the dead that live not again until the thousand years are finished. The thousand years identify with Satan, uh, his period of, of being bound over the church age. When they finished, it was the time of the great tribulation and God saved the great multitude out of the great tribulation. So, so the great multitude is referred to the rest of the dead that the implication is will live again once the great tribulation comes or Satan's period of binding of a thousand years is complete. So Lazarus could definitely be used as a figure since he was dead and came to life of the rest of the dead and, and also four days the furthest extent of death, and also his rising from the dead after four days would point to the elect who rise up in the first resurrection. First resurrection, according to Revelation 20, this is the first resurrection, and the first resurrection is of the spirit, the soul. So once God completes the salvation of all the elect, then that is the first resurrection. And the physical resurrection of Lazarus could, could also point to that. Going back to John 21, verse 23, Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? You know, very hard language to understand. I'm not sure... You know, I'm sure there's more here, and, and I don't know everything that's involved here, but I would think because it's being pointed to everything in John 21, from the fishing to the, the drawing of the fish to the, uh, you know, uh, feed my sheep three times, everything has been post end time, end time, great tribulation, and then in judgment day. And, and so I would think that this concluding passage would, would also be, um, you know, along those lines. Thanks for watching and be on the lookout for more new open forum excerpts that will be added periodically.